So today I'm going to be casting in resin some uh, super tube type diffusers using a 3D printed mold um, and some of this uh, casting resin. Um, start with the 3D printed mold where the super tube is a tube and you'll see it when it comes out. And so the way that this mold is designed is we have the threads here, right? The stop the whole tube. The top is open so I can pour the resin in on the top. Um, and there's an open cavity that will hold this um, core insert in. And then I'll sandwich this closed and hold it together uh, with some clamps. Um, so that's the way that this is going to go. Before I can start, I have to apply some mold release. Uh, without the mold release, the, um, the core insert particularly will get terribly stuck um, against the, uh, the resin. So I'm just going to apply So I'm going to apply some here. I think I might have done a bit much. Spread it out a little bit. Um, you'll see that I'm wearing gloves. So I'm not too worried about touching this. And this is, this is set now. Um, the plastic, I don't really need to apply mold release every single time. The plastic is a bit more porous for the outer mold the shell. So um, it absorbs the mold release. I'll put a little bit on to refresh it. Um, and that'll be, that'll be plenty. Um, next, I have to get the mold release ready for, uh, or the mold rather, ready. So I'm going to put the, get these clamps ready. Put them kind of small and ready. Two clamps here. Should be fine. Get my clamps ready. And then I'm going to uh, put the mold in. I need to leave a gap at the top. Um, and there's going to be a meniscus form. So I don't need it to be. Uh, to be uh, super uh, close to the top. All right, and then this surface here, I've sanded to be flat, so I'm going to simply lay it down on this board here to make sure that the surface is good and flat. And that'll make sure that I have the proper alignment. That's not quite right. And the reason why this alignment is tricky is because my mold halves are not precisely square. Um, these were 3D printed molds. And one of the issues with the 3D printer is that the arms of the 3D printer are not all perfectly um, square with each other. And so you can get into, uh, into issues where the This isn't quite right. Which side did I sand down? It's this side. Yeah. Right, so this is the side I gotta be flat, the side I insert on. It was a mistake. So let me insert this. And then shoot it up to the right depth. Um, anyway, what I was saying was the problem with the 3D printer is that they are not perfectly square. Uh, the axes are not perfectly square with each other. And so we can have issues where what we get out um, is not perfectly square. Um, and that will create problems. Since uh, what comes out, although it looks like a rectangle, is actually a bit of a uh, a bit of a parallelogram, um, and that—that's a—it's 
kind of no good. So, um, so I had to do a bunch of um, sanding to actually get a flat surface that I could uh, measure against. these to be fairly tight because tighter means that less less uh, resin might seep out through the cracks. There is something wrong with this thing. a square now that I can use to uh, a little, the bubble level here so I can use this to make sure that my setup is level and levelness is of course important because levelness is important because that will make the uh, the top flat rather than at an, at an angle. And of course, a lot of this can be um, corrected in, uh, in post uh, because you will have to sand this handle quite a lot. Um, I'm going to shim this side. So now what I have is the all this ready, it's clamped, um, and I'm ready to now uh, mix up the casting resins um, into my cup. I should be using a, uh, a single cup, or two cups rather, uh, but I'm going to do it in just one because um, short. Um, this casting resin is tricky stuff. Um, this has a three minute set time and it needs to be mixed very well during the work time. However, um, if I uh, if I take all my three minutes mixing, there won't be enough time for it to settle in the mold. And so what I need to do is I have to be able to stir this up and get it reasonably bubble free um, in just about one minute. Um, if I can't do it in one minute, I won't get the kind of the two minutes of settling time and pouring time that I need for this to um, for this to work. So I'm going to try to do this now. The volume here um, of the of the resin measured in uh, uh, inventor cam inventor cad when uh, inventor uh, autodesk inventor rather when i uh, created the part is about uh, 12 cc's i'm going to mix about 20 because some is going to it's going to drip out um, so i'll start with this put in about 10 
this away. Later on, I'll have to put dry gas into these to preserve them uh, because these are really moisture sensitive. Um, and you gotta shake them well, right? Because shake well before using. But you don't wanna shake them so much that you develop a lot of bubbles. Uh, because bubbles. Uh oh. Something bad happened to this. Some of this is resin scent. I need to get pliers. This is the resin sign that's the and this is uh Okay. Well, that at least guarantees a tight seal. Um, so it's, this is a 50-50 mix. I have to clean this up again later. Uh, but right now my time is passing, right? My, my, uh, my one minute of stirring has begun. And I gotta make sure that I get the bottoms, scrape the bottoms and the sides, and don't drip all over the place to make a mess. Gotta scrape the bottoms and the sides and the corners especially. Okay. There we go. Now we pour this in. There's a very narrow gap here, right? Because there's only the width of the of the top part of the um, of the diffuser to let air go in and out. So I have to be careful not to pour too fast and overload that air channel. Um, at the same time, I gotta pour fast enough that I don't run out of set time. All right, so it looks like I've reached and it's full now. So that's good. Um, I might actually take some out um, so that I don't have to sand so much off later. feel that there's some coming out the sides, which is fine. I'll have to clean that up with a knife. Um, hmm, I affected the level. Um, so to tell you the truth, I don't actually do this with these uh, two clamps, this two clamp method normally. Um, I actually have a, a vise at the tech shop you know, that's capable of turning sideways and that's way easier to use. Um, I'll show you what that looks like at the end of this. Um, so this will take um, 
some time to set um, and about uh, 15 minutes so um, we'll let that go right I can't touch it or anything now and uh, we'll take a look to see what happens when it when it's done we're back and you'll notice that this setup is a little bit different than the way that I left it beforehand um, what happened was some of the plastic dripped out the bottom um, and the amount of plastic that drips out the bottom slows down as it gets more and more viscous but it went to a sufficient extent that that first uh, pour was uh, a kind of, you might call a short shot. Um, as the plastic dripped out or as the resin dripped out uh, it left the top uncovered um, which you'll notice that okay you can kind of see that the surface you know what it looks like uh, but it kind of um, I can't illustrate a key thing that I wanted to show. One of the things that's important to note about this um, in preventing short shots like this um, is that you do have to overfill a little bit. Some amount um, is always going to drip out the seams um, and that amount is going to slow down as the, uh, as the resin cures. Um, and it's fine, it's no big deal. We remove this flash with the knife um, and then when we sand the surface um, it'll be totally okay. Um, but your time window for kind of overfilling this is limited. The cure rate of resin is interesting um, and depends on the ratio of surface area to total volume. The higher the ratio of surface area to volume, the slower the resin cures which means that a block of resin that's like in this cup or like a sphere or a cube of resin, that will cure quite fast. Whereas a thin part like this with like a thin wall where the surface area is very high, but the volume is low, um, the total volume of resin is low, part like this cures slowly, which means the resin in the mold cures much slower than the resin in the cup. So if you see, uh-oh, there's uh, resin dripping out the bottom, and the top is starting to become empty by the time that happens your resin in the cup is full uh, sorry is is fully cured um, and it won't flow you won't be able to pour it in so you do have to overfill a little bit um, to account for the amount of drip um, and I, I didn't do it uh, account for that enough because the clamps mechanism uh, is not super tight so more drips out um, you know, not, not a ton, right? It didn't all drip out, you know, in a couple of seconds. If I had overfilled it just another millimeter and easily had enough left, right? Another one or two cc's, this would have been fine. Um, but I was kind of used to doing the vice method and the vice provides a much more kind of a secure grip on the mold and much less drips out. And so I didn't, I didn't account for that and I had to do it again. Um, and so this is what the vice looks like. Um, the vice that we have here at the tech shop is quite nice. Uh, because um, you'll notice that the back end here is round, uh, which means this vise can rotate side by side to side. Um, and I'll, when I demold, I'll show you what this looks like. Uh, when the vise grip is tight, as it is now holding on this mold, you can't rotate it, so I can't show you that rotation. Um, so now we're ready to, to demold. Uh, but before we demold, we gotta think, right? The core pin now, um, or the core insert is way in here and the top is closed um, and this um, seal here for the core insert is very strong it's a it's a vacuum and so although it's lubricated and I can pull the core pin out of the bottom um, when it's necessary to that will form a stronger and stronger vacuum as I as I pull out the core pin um, and that is going to implode the, the plastic part um, so if I pull the core pin out, it's going to form a vacuum inside and some part of this is going to get weak and it's going to implode. And so I need to prevent that from happening. Uh, there are a couple of different ways I could do that. First is that I could put a taper. If I could put a taper onto the core pin, um, that would prevent it from, uh, that would cause the uh, vacuum to get released very quickly. Um, setting up our lathe here at TechShop 2, uh, make a taper um, is a little bit tricky and making tapers on lathes in general is a bit tricky especially for a long part like this like this pin um, so that's an eventual improvement that we can make um, but um, 
I don't have that uh, at the moment. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to poke a little bit, a little hole at the top here um, using this, uh, using the safety pin. Um, and that will help me release the, uh, the pressure. Um, I usually like doing this when it's a bit softer um, because the, um, it's easier to, um, to create the hole when, uh, when it's a little bit less cured. It's quite hard now and there's a, there's a good chance that I won't get all the way through. And if I don't get all the way through, then um, this won't be able to, uh, to release the mold. Um, I'll, I'll show you a bit later. There's also this countersink thing in the middle um, that kind of interferes with, uh, with my ability to do this. Um, I've done this quite well previously uh, while wet using a toothpick doing it this way with the safety pin is a bit of a hack, um, especially because it's a little bit late now. And so we'll see whether or not this is, uh, this is sufficient. I'll try to uh, go around and avoid the, the deep countersink in the middle. Since the deep countersink in the middle um, would mean that I have to, would require me to uh, punch out way too much plastic, too much resin. So. All right, so now we are ready to, to demold. Get rid of that. Um, you'll see now that I can rotate, right? So I'll put this here so I can get it slightly out of the way, and then I can uh, I can demold, you know, on, on camera. So we've got this mold here. Um, should pop off relatively easily. Hmm. It should come off relatively easily because of the mold release. easy with the right tool. All right. There we go. What happened is I didn't get a lot of mold release on these edges here, so some of the flash was a little sticky. Uh, but you can see, right, it, it was a clean demold, right? Nothing got left behind. Um, I've got this core pin in here now that I've got to, that I've got to get out. One of the things you notice is you see there's a little, a little drip down here, and I could see that drip happening while it was uh, drying. You might be tempted while it's wet to try to uh, clean up that drip with a paper towel. Um, resist the urge and don't do it. Um, it's much easier to clean this off, get this off cleanly, right? When it's a big mass, you know, it comes off really easily. If you wipe it off, you won't be able to get it all with a paper towel. Uh, and you'll leave like a small amount and those really small flecks they're hard to get off the surface uh, much easier to let it set as a big mass you can at get the whole thing off now i got to get the core pin out and you'll see that i, I it's pretty easy um, because one of these holes i put one of these little holes i put at the top um, uh, came out you can see them yeah, so three of them you can see got all the way through. There are only small holes here, um, and I can sand these down so they don't so apparent. Um, and so here's the here's the finished diffuser. Looking for a good alignment on the threads here, um, and that's pretty good. So this is going to be functional. And what I'm going to need to do is uh, I'll use a knife to clean up this flash here um, and then uh, sandpaper under running water will make uh, very quick work 
of the, uh, the striations here. And the reason for these striations, like, you know, where do these striations come from, uh, is from the 3D printer, right? Because the 3D printer is a, is a fused filament printer that I, uh, that I uh, printed in PLA. Um, it's got these uh, striations here uh, from all of the layers, and those do show up here. Um, unlike the mold, where because the whole thing is... Uh, filament all the way through when I sanded this mold. No matter how much I sand, I can't get all the filament out because the whole thing is not 100% solid. There are gaps in it. Um, this is solid underneath these. So besides the surface imperfection, once I sand it, it um, it'll be, it'll be um, completely smooth. Now if I want a matte finish, I can take it to like a 180 grit under running water. Uh, if I wanted uh, something totally smooth, I might take it up to like a Maybe a 320 grit, um, and then use uh, this stuff, Novus plastic polish, um, to finish it off if I want it to be totally smooth. Um, right now, it's a little bit soft. Um, and sanding this soft stuff is not so good. So while it's soft, this is your window of opportunity to use a knife on it. it works, knives work really well on this thing while it's a little bit on the, on the soft side, right? Um, and then you want to wait for it to be totally hard, which might take uh, a couple of hours, maybe one or two hours, maybe a, maybe a day would be even better uh, for you to come back and sand it. And when sanding it, it's still pretty soft. So you do want to sand it under running water. Dry sanding is not, uh, is not that great because um, it'll clog up your uh, sandpaper really fast. Um, so you'll say, hey, this stuff is strangely tough. It doesn't sand, uh, but you put it under running water, um, and it sands really smooth in like no time at all, you know, it's like two or three minutes uh, and you can get this smooth. Um, so when I uh, show you what this looks like in the tube, it should be all finished up. So here's the final and fully sanded handle. Uh, you can see that now it's quite smooth um, and it has uh, you know, the screw mechanism works. Um, it's tighter than the stock super tube and doesn't have the locking mechanism. Uh, it screws tightly as a, as a traditional screw. And then the quality of the light, here's the yellow here and the yellow here, uh, quite comparable. One of the things to notice, um, if we can change the Right. If we change the exposure a bit, you notice that the the super tube is actually quite transparent. Right, you can see through it in the super tube. You can see through and see the reflector at the top. And when I change the angle here, you can actually see the uh, highlight from the LED shining at different angles. Right, so the brightness is going to change. Um, depending on the angle. Here on the resin tube, the resin diffuses the light more evenly um, without being any darker. And so regardless of what angle I point at, um, regardless of the um, whether you're looking at it straight on, or sideways, there's no, there's no highlights. You can't see through the you can't see through the tube. You'll also notice that the super tube, uh, and this isn't any better or worse, it's just different, um, is significantly more tapered. Um, it has a significant outer taper um, and of course an inner taper because an inner taper, as, as we learned, is necessary um, because mine, you can see the holes at the top, kind of looks like a, a salt shaker, uh, which of course the, the super tube doesn't, doesn't have. Um, and so this is now the fully sanded uh, surface finish that one could expect from a, uh, using the uh, resin to, uh, to cast a, a diffuser.